Hi, Carol. Please, do you have some time? I, I need to talk to someone. Of course, dear. You can tell me everything without fear. Tell me, baby, are you okay? Ah, <sighs> that reassures me. I've been keeping this pain for so long inside without being able to tell anyone in fear of being judged. But first, let's start with the beginning. I'll tell you how I conceived my son. Before we continue with the story, do not forget to click on the notification button in order to get notified at every new video posted. Thank you. I still was a student in the faculty of letters in the university. I was in a relationship with a friend of my big brother who ended up becoming the love of my life. As in any classic relationship, the beginnings were magical. Since he was a high school teacher, he was financially independent. He made outings and goodies very common. Until I got my bachelor's degree, he took care of me. Every time he ended up proving himself to my family. And little by little, my mother and father let me go spend weekends with him. And it wasn't long before I took a liking to the fact of rubbing shoulders with him more. And it made me project myself into the skin of a housewife. Every Friday after school, I no longer returned to the family home. I went directly to my boyfriend's place. Everything was fine since I had carte blanche from my parents. And during the weekend, I was in charge of preparing his week. I did his laundry, his dishes, his housework and prepared two or three meals that I had in the fridge so he had something to eat during the week. Besides, I had made friends with his closest neighbor whom I gave certain traditional meals after cooking as a sign of friendship. All of my efforts seemed to be appreciated not only by my boyfriend but also by his friend who every Saturday came to his house house to eat homemade food but emily you are spinning perfect love why did you separate don't be in a hurry the interesting part is coming it was soon going to be a year since i obtained my degree in bilingual letters we soon had to move on to a next phase my boyfriend and i he wanted us to formalize our relationship through marriage. But the downside was the fact that he and I couldn't get married without getting a stable job. My parents made a point of it. Far from them, the intention to harm my relationship by imposing this condition. They just wanted to shield me from the financial vulnerability that many women face in their marriages. Only now do I understand why. This is how Nicholas, after obtaining my parents' approval, decided to enroll me in a prep class for the professional competition which I was going to participate in. Since the cost was a little high, he made a first payment to the secretariat of the preparation school. He paid 50% of the registration fee, promising to pay the rest a month later. I was very excited at the sight of this new challenge that presented itself to me. I was going to have to start reading a lot again and observe rigid discipline to ensure my success. And the discipline began to have effect to the frequency at which I went to see Nicholas during the weekend. Instead of every Friday, Friday, I was obliged to reduce my visit to his house to two Fridays per month. At first, I saw no inconvenience since he understood perfectly that I had to concentrate to be able to succeed in my exam. But little by little, each time we talked on the phone, I felt like some kind of disappointment in his voice. I thought that at first it was just because he missed me, but that everything would be better at the end of the exam. Then suddenly, he started to become distant. I couldn't resist and I decided to talk to him in order to burst the abscess. He reassured me by telling me that it was just fatigue and the fact that he had a lot of work in school. I let it sink. Three weeks later, what caught my attention was the fact that my general knowledge teacher made me leave the room in all discretion to let me know that the second installment of my registration fee had still not been paid as agreed. I was in shock, yet Nicholas and I had concluded that he was supposed to pay the fees one month after the first installment. In addition, he had asked my parents not to bother financially for the lessons because he was going to take care of it. Later that evening, I called my boyfriend to find out what was going on, but I couldn't reach him on the phone. I thought that maybe it was a battery problem and I tried later. He always used to be glued on his phone around 10 p.m. So I was going to call him around that hour so we could talk calmly. But to my surprise, he was still not available. I got worried because it was unusual for him not to be reachable at that time. Usually this time was when he was more relaxed. I made the decision to go see him at the house the next day. He was bound to be at home. It was a Sunday. Once at his house, I rang for almost 15 minutes without anyone coming to open the door for me. It was curious. It was only 8 a.m. and it was a Sunday, so it was impossible for him to be at work. In addition, Nicholas didn't often go to mass. I insisted until he deigned to open the door for me. 
Once open, he held the door down with his right hand, just sticking his head out to see who it was. Seeing me, I saw his face crumble. He asked the question, What are you doing here? in a disturbed tone. It sounded like I was interrupting something. I replied, Let me enter by pushing the door. And there I came across the scene that would change the course of my relationship. Do you remember the neighbor to whom I offered meals? She was in the house in her undress. It was clear that they had an affair. I couldn't stand it. I made a scene created a scandal. The whole neighborhood came out and Nicholas chased me out of his house. I was extremely heartbroken. I was broken, but that was nothing compared to what I was going to experience a few weeks later. Excuse me? So you mean there is anything worse than being cheated on, finding out and getting kicked out of your boyfriend's house? Yeah, uh, I later found out that I was pregnant for Nicholas. Unbelievable! I tried to talk to him about it, but he coldly asked me to have an abortion. I did not understand his attitude, so I told myself that by giving him time to digest the news, he would come back to his senses. But that never happened. On the contrary, a month later, I learned through a friend that he was now in a relationship with a famous neighbor. The event of the previous weeks had me broken that I had no tears to shed anymore. I took my courage in both hands and announced my pregnancy to my parents. And against all expectations, they reacted so well. My mother asked how Nicholas had taken the news, and I told them what happened between us. They sympathized with my pain and comforted me as best as they could. In addition, they advised me not to have an abortion. They promised me that they would take good care of baby and I, and I would remain their darling child. The next week, Dad paid the second installment for my prep classes, and I continued to study until the exam came around. And against all expectations, despite the source of the pregnancy and the psychological pain that I still carried because of the stigmata of the breakup with Nicholas, I packed my exam with flying colors. I could finally start my training, which would give me access to a stable and real job. My son was born, and despite my fear, he didn't lack love. He was surrounded by all my family who showed me how much they supported us. And that's how, trying to heal from my wounds, I met my dear and tender husband, Vincent. We met one evening when I was coming home from work. I was about to start my car when I felt a slight jolt. He was the one who had hit me from behind, trying to do a maneuver. But what pleasantly surprised me was the fact that he apologized and left his car to me so we could discuss the terms of the repair cost. His maneuver had dared a scratch on the painting of my car, and he desperately wanted to make it up to me. This is how, after solving this little problem, Problem, we started to talk more and more. We got to know each other and I learned to discover the wonderful man he was behind the somewhat reckless driver. In turn, I also told him about my life, my wounds and especially my fears for the future in love. And he reassured me by offering me his sincere friendship. After six months, we were a couple and on the ninth month anniversary of our relationship, he asked my hand in marriage. The most wonderful thing about all of this is the fact that he accepted my son as his own. Own. He even took the initiative to recognize him legally and give him his last name. I admitted everything was beautiful until a few weeks ago. While I was shopping at the mall after work, I ran into Nicholas. As soon as he saw me, he threw himself on me, asking me for forgiveness for what he did. At first, I had trouble understanding what was happening. It was so sudden, but afterwards, I gave him the opportunity to explain himself in relation to what had happened a few years ago, and that's how he made me understand the things that were wrong in our relationship. Then we did meet again in secret. I must admit that I never stopped loving him in reality. All I felt after our breakup was pain, but I never hated him. Today I am faced with a dilemma. He wants me to give him another chance by getting back into a relationship with him. Mm, I hope you kicked him out. Um, no. And that's why I'm just telling you about it. Tell me, what would you have done in my place?